Many of the surface brushes are rather simplistic in terms of the number of options available, but the flatten brush is not one of those. It has quite a few different options and the user really needs to sit down and experiment with this brush because again, there are so many different variables that can change how it behaves. It wouldn't be sufficient to say it's a trim brush because it does a bit more than that. Let's go ahead and take a look at it here. If I were to leave don't lift edges unchecked, then it's going to essentially press down toward the center and on the edges it's going to lift that part of the surface. You can see how it's pushing the geometry around the edges upwards so that it flattens it out. Even though it's still trying to adhere for the most part to the surface. I can change the normal sampling. When you hover over it, it explains in greater detail what it does. Higher sampling values averages the normals over a wider radius, while lower values averages or flattens over a smaller radius. If I choose build up, then it will continue to either eat into the surface or in some cases it will actually build up away from the surface. One thing you can do is hold down the control key and you'll notice how it actually extrudes outwardly. Let's turn spacing on for that. I'll undo a few times. And then we can adjust our plane softness if you want that as an option. So I'll go ahead and brush here. With this particular brush, you may elect to use the second brush draw mode that will affect the depth only. It's not going to modify the radius. Perhaps you want the radius to be modified. And if you do, choose either this first or third one. But the second one, it just modifies the depth only. So I can go with light pressure and then press harder in areas where I need it. And let's turn build up off. It responds quite differently though if you check don't lift edges. So again, it's not going to build up around the edges of your brush. It's going to essentially scrape. And that's all it's going to do. So in this sense, it's a little bit more like the chisel brush. And then your normal sampling does affect your brush somewhat, but not quite as much as when this is unchecked. So, yeah, as I'm pressing down here, I'm getting very little effect. Let me undo a few times. All right, so let's bring that up to 100. That's much more pronounced. When you get a brush setting that you like, go ahead and store it as a preset right away because you'll probably come up with a few variations worth storing while you experiment with a brush. One of the things you're probably going to want to store is the on-plane functionality. We have already covered it in detail in the Boxwell Plane Brush video. So rather than elaborating on all the details and different parameters again, I'll just quickly brush through it. You could use the flatten brush with this functionality built in. By default, you'll have defined by right mouse button clicking, but you could define it by three or four points or by a specific plane. Let's stick with the default here and then the right mouse button action. When you click, this determines what it's going to do with the plane. Is it going to face toward the camera or is it going to face along the local normals, things like that. Forward direction is the default. This might be the most common one for you because you can always rotate about your model and have it face directly toward the camera. 
So let's right click and I can move around, right click there. And when you want to move the plane forward or backwards, you can use your plus or minus key on the number pad. So the plus key will walk it backwards away from the camera. And then the minus key will bring it closer to the camera. If you want to adjust the amount of increments that it moves with each press of your hotkey, you can adjust that here. Also, if your plane is not visible, you may want to check draw plane size. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and brush. I'm going to hit my right bracket key to increase the brush size, and then I can adjust the plane size. Just a quick note about the plane itself. It's just a visual aid and nothing more. It doesn't represent the boundary by which it will cut. Again, it's just for visual purposes only. So let me turn build up off and turn plane softness to zero. And then if you have any specialty brushes, for example, sci-fi or something like that, let me find something rather interesting. Let's go right here. And again, I will use my hotkeys to walk it back. I'll hit my E key to bring the E panel to my cursor. I'm going to choose paint with dabs. And it's just that simple to quickly add details with a single click. I'll undo a few times here. All right, let's uncheck that. Another option is remove stretching. If you happen to notice any stretching or if you want it to be smoothed out a bit after you release your mouse, then it will decimate or optimize the mesh right where you were brushing. If your model is lower in resolution or up to an intermediate stage, then the performance should be rather good. But on a very dense object, the remove stretching will produce a noticeable pause at the end of your brush stroke. So just be prepared for that. And anytime you're sculpting in surface mode, if you notice a pause after your brush, then you may want to check in the toolbar for remove stretching. If it's checked, that's probably the reason why, because it's performing an entirely separate operation after your brush stroke. Let's go back to our regular brush. One last thing is edit flatten curves. The default will be linear like this, but you may want to make some adjustments to suit your preference. Right, okay. So I need to change my brush. And with that, we will conclude this look at the flattened brush. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.